In section 4.4, we'll be focusing on the equidistance theorems. These theorems are extremely important because they are going to help you save some steps in your proofs. They're a little confusing at first, but make sure that you're paying close attention to the video as we go through this today. Now, let's first start off by talking about the distance between two points. So if I give you this point Y and this point Z, the distance between those two points is going to be the shortest path between the two points. So we can say the distance between those two points can be the length of segment YZ or just capital Y, capital Z. Now, if I gave you some other point, let's say point A, and I told you that segment YZ is congruent to segment AZ. So if those two segments are congruent, what that means is those two points, A and Y, are each equidistant from point Z. The first theorem, which you do have to memorize for your proofs, states that if two points are equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then they determine the perpendicular bisector of the segment. Taking a look at the first example, let's go ahead and mark our diagram with tick marks to see what we're working with. Now, we have a couple sets of congruent segments, but one thing I want you to notice, based off of the first given, is that we have this point A that is equidistant from the endpoints B and D. So A is the same distance from point B as it is from point D. And then we have this point C that's also the same distance from point B as it is from point D. So that means that those two points, A and C, determine the perpendicular bisector of that segment BD. Now let's take a look at another example. So for this one, let's go ahead and fill in our tick marks based off of the givens. And we know we have this point P that is equidistant from points Q and S. It's the same distance from point Q as it is from point S. And R is also equidistant from those same two points. So that means that those two points, the yellow and blue ones, P and R, determine the perpendicular bisector of the red endpoint segment QS. For example three, we know that we have our point L that is equidistant from points S and P. And we have our point H that is also equidistant, excuse me, from those two points S and P. So that means that those two points, L and H, determine the perpendicular bisector of segment SP. And let's fill in our tick marks on the fourth and final example for this one. One thing I want you to notice is now we have those two points equidistant from the endpoints W and Y. But let's go ahead and draw in that segment WY since it's not there to begin with. Now, if it were a proof, you would have to add that as a step in your proof. So we have point X that's equidistant from points W and Y. And then we also have point T that's equidistant from those same two points, which means that those two points, X and T, determine the perpendicular bisector of segment WY. Now this next theorem is going to take that idea in reverse. And it states that if a point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So we have our perpendicular bisector, which is AE. I'm going to highlight that here in purple. And then we have the segment BD at the bottom, the red one. So AE is the perpendicular bisector of BD, which means that any point that lies on that perpendicular bisector, any point that lies on that purple segment is equidistant from the endpoints of the red segment, which means that since C lies on that perpendicular bisector, that means that C is equidistant from points B and D. E also lies on the perpendicular bisector, so that means that E is equidistant from points B and D, meaning that BE is congruent to segment ED. And finally, A lies on that perpendicular bisector, so that means it's equidistant from the endpoints of the segment, B and D. So that means segment AB must be congruent to segment AD. Let's try another one. So once again, we have our perpendicular bisector PR here. I'm highlighting that in purple. 
and it's bisecting the segment QS, which I'm highlighting in red. So we have a point P that lies on that perpendicular bisector, which means that P is equidistant from Q and S. So that means segment PQ is congruent to segment PS. Now T is another point that lies on that perpendicular bisector, which means that T is also equidistant from points Q and S, making segment QT congruent to segment TS. And finally, R lies on the perpendicular bisector, which means that R is equidistant from points Q and S, making segments RQ and RS congruent. For number seven, we have our perpendicular bisector and our segment. L lies on the perpendicular bisector, so it's equidistant from points S and P, making segment LS congruent to segment LP. And H also lies on that perpendicular bisector, making it equidistant from points S and P. And last but not least, we have our perpendicular bisector XZ, and it's bisecting segment WY. Well, since that segment isn't there, we do have to construct it, just like we did on the first page. And then we could draw in that segment. There you go. And now let's find points that lie on the perpendicular bisector. So Z is a point that lies on that purple segment, so that means it's equidistant from the endpoints W and Y. So WZ is congruent to ZY. Now T also lies on that perpendicular bisector, which means it's also equidistant from those two points W and Y, making TW congruent to TY. And then finally, we have point X that lies on the perpendicular bisector, making it equidistant from the endpoints and making segments WX and XY congruence.